My parents are moving in, so you get out. Excuse me? What on earth is my husband talking about? I'm the one paying 2,600 living expenses though. But for me, this situation was pretty convenient. The very next day, I reached out to a recycling company. If he's serious about this, I won't hold back. Hey, what the heck happened here? They're my stuff, so I can do whatever I want with them, right? My name is Sky. I recently got married to Gavin. We met at a friend's party, and he was the one who made the first move. Gradually, I find myself drawn to him, and we started going out. Things went smoothly between us, and after about two years of being together, he popped the question. The timing was perfect, as I was hoping to get married in my early 30s. I was over the moon when he got down on his knee. I eagerly accepted, and we planned to tie the knot in the near future. Soon after, we went to introduce ourselves to each other's family. He had a stable job, so my parents were reassured. Please take good care of our daughter. Yes, I will make sure she's happy. When he confidently declared, I was delighted. He was funny and caring, so I had no doubt our marriage would be blissful. After that, we visited his parents to make introductions. To be honest, I don't even want to remember it so much. First of all, they gave off a bad vibe from the moment I introduced myself. Hi, I'm Sky. Nice to finally meet you. Oh, you're here, Gavin. It must have been a hassle to come all the way here in this heat. I prepared some cold drinks, so come inside. Oh, you brought a friend with you. I didn't notice. Um, Mom, she's not a friend. She's my fiance, Sky. Oh, my mistake. How fortunate that Gavin chose you, Sky. My mother in law uttered something unexpected. It was incredibly rude to ignore my greeting, especially since it was our first meeting. We were then led into the living room to greet my father-in-law, but he didn't respond to my questions and simply talked with Gavin. They didn't mention our marriage at all and had an insider conversation that only they understood for over an hour. I felt completely left out. And that's how our introduction to my in-laws ended. I didn't even get to have a proper conversation with them. I felt that they acted terribly, so I asked Gavin if he had given them a heads up about our marriage. He apparently did, but if that was the case, they treated me pretty coldly. I felt very unpleasant. Because of that, I was reluctant to go through with the formal meeting between both families. I participated feeling incredibly anxious. I had warned my parents beforehand to be careful when dealing with his parents. My parents handled it well, though. His parents weren't displaying best attitude, but my parents asked many questions and praised them for every answer, so his parents started speaking more openly. The dinner meeting went smoothly in a cheerful atmosphere, and I was relieved. I felt tremendous gratitude toward my parents for that. Afterward. We had a memorable wedding, went on our honeymoon, and moved in together. We received a marriage certificate in a few weeks, and our marriage became official. And so began our newlywed life. I have to admit, being newlyweds was really exciting. Since we didn't live together before getting married, it was also a fresh experience for us. Every day, I was in a happy mood. I'm home. Hey, about time. What's for dinner tonight? It's meatloaf, your favorite. Meatloaf? Awesome. I'll change right away. We were just gleeful like that every day. Even though we both had jobs, Gavin would often cook simple meals, which was a big help to me. I had heard many stories about how all the chores fell onto the wife after marriage, and it became tough. I was glad that it wasn't the case for us. 
I thought I was lucky to have married him. We had a happy newlywed life. However, about a year into our marriage, his attitude suddenly became cold. At first, I noticed our conversation became distant. Listen, something happened at work today. Uh huh. Hey, are you listening? Oh, yeah, sure. Seriously? Oh, right. He didn't really pay attention to what I said, and our conversations dwindled. He didn't talk much while we ate, and it was eerie quiet. It seemed like he was getting fed up with the situation too, and he was started working late more often and coming home much later. He also started going out for drinks frequently, and sometimes came back drunk. I couldn't understand how our relationship had suddenly taken a downfall. I wondered if I had done something to upset him, or if his feelings for me cooled off after just one year. Those questions swirled in my mind every day. His late return made it difficult to find the right time to talk. I worried that we would end up parting ways if we continued like that. While I was feeling anxious, he suddenly approached me one day. Hey, do you want to go out for dinner today? What's going on all of a sudden? Uh, well, I realized we've been strained lately. Work's been really hectic, and I've been mentally exhausted. I've been giving you the cold shoulder. I'm really sorry. He apologized. It's all good. To be honest, it's been pretty tough. But if you apologize, I'll forgive you. Thanks, son. I'll be more careful from now on. I was glad that he came to his senses. If we had continued without speaking to each other, we might have ended up divorcing. That day, we went to restaurants and enjoyed delicious food and drinks together. He talked about various things. Just like when we were dating, and I had a blast. I felt like we could have a happy marriage again. He genuinely started acting like he used to, valuing our time together. He engaged in interesting conversations during meals, and he came home earlier. So, I was completely at ease. In the midst of that, he made a proposal. You know, there's going to be a new apartment building coming up soon. It's a great location for commuting to the city, and above all, the design looks fantastic. How about we move there? He showed me a website of the property. It looked modern and nice, as he said. We lived in an apartment I had been living in since I was single. It was in a decent location and was spacious enough for the two of us. I had bought new appliances not too long ago, and we had discussed living our newlywed life there. About a year and a half had passed since we got married, and considering our future and the possibility of having children, it was a good time to move. The monthly rent was two thousand dollars. It was somewhat high for our standard, but if we split it evenly, that would be one thousand each. If we tightened our belts a bit with other expenses, we could have managed. I agreed with his suggestion and went to see the property agent right away. A few months later, the apartment was completed and we moved into our new home. The house was pristine, spacious, and had plenty of rooms, making it very comfortable. Gavin was also impressed and seemed satisfied. Once we actually started living there, it felt incredibly cozy and pleasant. With a modern kitchen, cooking every day was enjoyable. Our new home was a place of pure joy. However, something began to bother me about a month later. Honey, about this month's rent, you haven't deposited your part into the joint account yet. Oh, really? I thought I had already put it in. Please do it soon. There's a deadline. Sorry. I thought I had already done it, so I went shopping. Can you cover from me this month? I'll pay you back right away. Oh, okay. I reluctantly paid the entire rent from my salary. It was the first time I saw his lax side, so I thought he would repay me promptly. 
However, two weeks, then three weeks passed, and he still hadn't paid me back. In the end, the deadline for the next rent arrived. Look, you still haven't paid me for the last month. Wait, so I have to pay two thousand all at once? That's impossible. No way. We agreed to split it in half every month. Well, yeah, but it's a bit too much, you know. Come on, don't make excuses. We made a promise, so you better keep it. I'm working hard too. I couldn't get what he meant by working hard. If he was working hard, he should be contributing to our rent for the sake of our marriage. Then can't you set aside the rent from your salary in advance? Oh, um, okay. I was skeptical, and my trust in him took a nosedive. Besides the rent, I was paying for the groceries, utilities, and other expenses. It all amounted to about two thousand and six hundred a month. I wanted to save as much as I could, so it was challenging to get by on my salary alone. However, he continued to disregard the rent afterward. He only paid for the first month. Then there was a time when I got really angry with him. It happened when I was cleaning on my day off, and he was working. I was vacuuming the entire place when I found something in Gavin's walk-in closet. No, isn't this a designer's brand? To my surprise, he had been buying high-end clothing. He had never worn it in front of me before, so I had no clue he owned such expensive stuff. The fact that he was spending money when he wasn't contributing to our household in the first place outraged me. So when he came home, I confronted him. Hey, what's this? Um, that's my clothes. What's the matter? Why are you buying such an expensive thing? It's not a big deal. I can buy whatever I want with my own salary. Well, that's true. But you haven't paid anything toward our shared expenses like rent or groceries. When are you going to contribute? Well. I'll do it when I have some extra cash. You don't have the money to spare for a living, but you're buying brand name clothing. Your priorities need to be fixed. When I said that, he got really defensive. Why are you making such a big deal? These clothes are more important to me. Besides, if we go by your logic, your income is also part of the family finances. So you paying the full rent is the same as us paying it together. He dared to make such selfish statements. They are not the same. You're indulging yourself, and I'm cutting back as much as possible on our living expenses. Show a little consideration. We had a major argument for the first time in a long while. He stormed out of the house, fuming. We both needed some time to cool off and collect our thoughts. After he left, I went through his closet again and found a receipt for a women's branded handbag in one of his drawers. The date was over a month ago. I didn't receive any branded bags, and my birthday was two months ago. At that time, he didn't give me any presents. We just went to a slightly expensive restaurant. Moreover. I was the one who paid for it, so he didn't do anything for me. It made sense all of a sudden. He was probably spoiling another woman. That was why he hadn't paid the rent and hadn't contributed to her living expenses. I decided to hire a private investigator. After about three days, he came back home as if nothing happened. However, I couldn't just accept him back normally. I didn't greet him, and we remained silent. He seemed to sense my anger through my demeanor and didn't try to talk to me. In my mind, I had already decided that once I got the result of the investigation, our marriage would be over. About two weeks later, I received the results. In the end, he was guilty. He was having an affair, and the other woman turned out to be his ex-girlfriend. He had mentioned a girl he was in the longest relationship with before. It seemed she was the one.
Their relationship had been going on since last year, which coincided with the time he started growing cold toward me. He had been cheating on me since then. I was filled with anger. He had only been nice to me to pretend we were in a happy marriage, so he could make me pay for all the living expenses and freely spend his salary. He had just been using me to his advantage. I couldn't just let it pass me. In the midst of it all, he demanded something unbelievable. It happened one day when he came home from work. My parents are moving in, so you need to get out of here. Huh? What on earth are you saying? Out of the blue? When we had a fight, I went to see them. They suggested that I separate from a wife like you and that they take your place. It sounded good to me, so I'm kicking you out and I'm going to live with my family. I was amused by his crazy declaration. I'm the one paying 2,600 living expenses, though. But for me, this situation was pretty convenient. Okay, it seems our relationship can't be repaired, so I'll leave. He smirked, saying, After you're gone, I'll come back, and left. The next day, I immediately contacted a recycling company. If he was serious about this, I wouldn't show any mercy. A few days later, I had all the furniture and appliances appraised by the recycling company and sold everything. In the end, I got a few hundred dollars of unexpected extra income. Then I packed up my things and moved in with my parents. Gavin had already served me with the divorce papers, but I was determined to fight him. Anyway, I was relieved to be away from him for the time being. When I informed him that I had completed the move, he responded cheerfully. Got it. Well, take care. A few days later, he called again. Hey, what the heck happened here? What? We are separated now, so there's no need for contact anymore, right? But there's no furniture or appliances left. How dare you take them all? They were my personal stuff, and I'm allowed to do whatever I wanted with them, you know? All were mine from my days of living alone. So, I sold them to a recycling company. Ugh, alright then. I'll have to buy everything. Really? Do you even have the money for that? Don't underestimate me. I'm earning a decent income, you know. But, you know, the rent for that place is 2000 a month. On top of that, you have to pay the living expenses for three adults, right? It would probably add up to about 2,600 to 3,000 a month, depending on how you live. You're kidding, right? It's true. I've been paying about that much each month. No way. My salary won't be enough. Yeah, you won't have any money left for your affair, either. I know everything. You've been seeing your ex-girlfriend. I'll come after you for alimony through a lawyer. Be prepared, okay? Bye then. Wait, please. I hung up the phone. And then I demanded alimony from him through a lawyer. The amount was set at $30,000, but since he hadn't saved any money, he ended up in debt. As expected, he couldn't afford to pay the rent and the living expenses, so he had to move out of that apartment immediately. However, his parents had already sold their house, so they had nowhere to go. Currently, they are reluctantly living in a cheap studio apartment with their family of three. He had been spending money with ease thanks to my income, but now he's left with no money and can't afford to entertain his mistress anymore. As a result, their relationship faded away. He begged me for reconciliation and tears, but I ignored him completely and blocked his number. The alimony is being paid in installments. If there are any delays, his salary can be garnished, so there shouldn't be any issues. On the other hand, I'm currently living with my parents and trying to save money I couldn't. Although my marriage ended in failure, I consider it a learning experience and plan to use it to better my future.